Dude, guys, thank you so much for being supportive for my wife. I am on an up and up. I'm extremely happy and I'm thankful for all the positivity that has been coming her way. I'm standing there thinking, oh God, what am I going to do? Like, and he flushes, he flushes the, toilet, the toilet, toilet and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking oh well, why, well, hold, hold on, let's pause for a second. Why did I flush the toilet, sweetheart? What's up, guys? Derek Lambert. This is my beautiful, wonderful wife. And um, I'm really proud of her for being honest and coming out. I know uh, you guys have been nothing but supportive and I'm super thankful for that because it was a big step for her to open up to me and tell me, you know, what was really going on. Because we've been dealing with this for a while and uh, I haven't told the channel. In fact, I've never gone out of my way to force or push anything, you know, out there on my wife or Kurt. Um, Kurt's been always been transparent. He's always said, hey, look, you know, more than welcome. My wife has done recordings with me in the past and has told me not to put it out there because she just wasn't ready yet. And we had dealt with this plenty of times throughout the past three and a half years of me being clean off heroin. This time she said, look, it feels good releasing this stuff. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you yeah, know. Derek has a way of um, encouraging me and helping me get the streak I need to do what I want to do but don't have the courage to do so um, I really appreciate having a husband who is as supportive and as you know motivational as he is without him you know I probably would just stay in my little show <laughs> and um, without you I wouldn't have this channel mm -hmm. I wouldn't I mean think about what, what what about the kids what about everything I mean you have kept it together and listen she's not and this is why I was saying in my last video I didn't get a chance to really explain um, she's held it together quite well if not I would have already known that she was using so she was really a high functioning prescribed by a doctor addict it snuck up on her in many ways well with the opioids I'd have to say yeah she's addicted but it's a different it's not the same as her Adderall with the Adderall it's like the way I was with opioids so um, she was willing to lie and you know tell lie on lie and layer on layer which I have done a hundred times when you've done it and you've experienced it and you know what it's like it's easy to forgive if you turn on the Discovery Channel, I'm I'm actually really motivated by those intervention shows mm -hmm. where they document a lot of personal stuff, stuff that people go, hey, don't put that out there. Well, guess what? I'm Derek Lambert. You're not me. You're not Ryan Lambert. And I, I get the respect that you know a lot of people have like, hey, she probably didn't want to be put on the spot. But we talked about afterwards. We edited the last video together and we have a plan. One. If I didn't want it on there, it wouldn't be. I'm very, I would say, headstrong, more than what you guys see, obviously. Um, I'm a little bit camera shy. <laughs> Probably a lot of it camera shy. He would have shy. been known. <laughs> um, but I am very headstrong, so he would have not at all put that video out um, without you know, me being okay with it. We did talk about it and we did discuss it. I knew that somebody who could relate to me, it would help them more to see me in, in my most vulnerable state because it was real and who can't relate to something that's, you know, real versus something that's just fake or, you know, not even emotion, you know, emotionless. Nobody can relate to that. So just like documentaries of interventions, those help a lot of people. And the reason why is because it is real, it is true, and it's real emotions. And even though those people do not want some of those personal things being put on blast or put out there, you know, for everyone to see, they're thankful at the end of all of it that it is put out there because they get clean most of the time from it or they don't and they don't care either way but when when they do get clean they do realize that that's what helped other people as well get clean so shout out to driven industry cg kid ashton mott these are guys who've been huge influencers and stuff when it comes to this my pops in canada who's huge on recovery he's been trying to help me and ryan in our relationship for some time he has two phds he does this he does marriage counseling you name it so there's like a variety of people who i have to give a shout out and say look they've been part of this and when this was happening me and her it was an emotional roller coaster for a good hour prior to me even pulling the camera out we had to go through some emotions and some feelings i was angry i was sad i was broken like 
this again, you know? And she was crying and then it was just up and down, anger, sadness, etc. And then I said, you know what? I pulled the camera out, even when she didn't necessarily was like, yeah, please record me, I'm crying. No, <laughs> it's not like I recorded you and then was like, yeah, I'm gonna post this uh, against your will. I wouldn't put it out there if I thought this was gonna damage my household, my family, my kids. And I figure that's important. Mainly, like you said, it is a prescription. You know, when you take something for so long, you, your body gets dependent on these things. The pain medication that I'm on, I do feel that I am dependent on it. I mean, I've been on it for four or five years and I have a, a reason to. However, I do feel like what it, what's it going to look like 10 years down the road? Started taking them at 24. I was probably one of the youngest diagnosed with degenerative bone disease. Does that mean I'm beyond such a high dose that I can't function, that I can't hold a job? So those are legit concerns. With the Adderall, it's different. With the Adderall, I know there's bad side, of, side effects. I know that I lie to my husband about it because he is very against me taking it because of how it changes, you know, me as a person, my mood. It makes me different, you know, and it's not someone that I like. It's not someone he likes, yet I can't stop. That's how you know that you have a problem. No, I didn't want to be honest with him because even though I know that Derek's very supportive, and he is, he's very supportive of me. However, I mean, I know he's going to make me stop. So why would I want to be honest with him? Um, I know that sounds bad, but it's the truth. So That's true. Um, I'd hide it. I mean, I've gone as far as Tell him about that. he would go out of town <laughs> and he would normally take them with him so that I couldn't find them around the house. But I started thinking one day and was like, hmm, I, I'm pretty sure I went and stayed the night with them out of town. And when he went to work in the morning, I looked where he normally keeps them and they weren't there. So I knew he didn't have them with him. So I'm thinking, I know he wouldn't leave them in the house for me to get a hold of. So where the hell would he put them, you know? So I'm thinking about it and I finally realized, like I noticed for two weeks, the prior week, or, you know, the prior two weeks that the car keys to our white vehicle that he drives were gone. They weren't at the house and he normally leaves those keys at the house because why does he need them? He didn't have the car. He took those keys with him for those two prior weeks and I couldn't figure out why the hell he needed those keys. When I realized that he didn't have the Adderall that week that I went and stayed with them, came home and was thinking, where are they? And I saw that the keys were home. So I figured, you know, what would be the only other reason that he'd be taking those keys? He probably forgot the keys, but was taking them because he hid my pills in there. So I went and looked and they were there. They were brand new, never been opened. The bag, the um, pharmacy bag was still closed and everything. So I thought, okay, so how can I get into this bag without him noticing? So I carefully, you know, undid the staple oh and gosh. I opened the bag and you know exactly where you know I made sure I didn't rip anything exactly where the staple was removed it um, opened it I couldn't take the medication because he would know if I took any so I'd open the capsules and I would you know take half of them I'd half them out every single one of them all of them and I would put them in this little jar and then I'd put the caps back on all the other ones so he couldn't tell that any of them were missing and I closed it back up and I'd staple it back together in the exact same spot and I'd put it back in there make sure everything looked exactly the same the way it was facing the I mean I thought of everything and he never noticed I mean why would someone do that if they didn't have a real problem to go out just, of their way like that? in my mind you know I had the reason to, and it was my <laughs> prescription. Right. Like, it was okay because it's mine. And you, you know what's so funny? Years so, ago, I used to do the same thing for I the painkillers. I felt that I had a reason or whatever, you know. Yeah, and, but you didn't. You weren't prescribed. So yeah, when you're but, prescribed, you justify it more yeah, in your but, head, but and it's it, harder. Here's the thing about your Adderall, okay? This is why we would need to obviously go see your doctor again as well. Um, I don't think you have actual ADHD. You see what I'm saying? And therefore that's something that, that well, a lot of it had to do with I couldn't stay awake I'm very mellow toned uh, my voice is very mellow um, I'm very uh, I'm a very mellow person I don't have energy I really can't get too excited about something even if I really feel excited about it I don't know how to show it I'm not really sure what that is or, or why I'm like that I wish I wasn't but I can't help it and it's just the way I am and I'm tired all the time like not normal tired 
and on pain medication it makes me even more tired half the medicine they do give me that I'm prescribed I can't even take like gabapentin mu muscle um, relaxers I can't take those because I have to work I have to take care of three kids all week long pretty much by myself when I get home from work and he's out of town so I have to have energy to, to function and I can't even take those I wouldn't even be able to drive on those because they'd make me so loopy so I can't take them mm -hmm. um, so the only thing I can take is a pain medicine and then even then it makes me tired but even naturally I don't have good energy so I went to the doctor you know I explained to him you know I can't I can't stay awake I'm tired all the time I'm depressed mm -hmm. I was very very depressed at the time Derek was actually using heroin when I um, went to my initial appointment and I broke down and cried and was telling him all this stuff and I thought you know a psychologist was the same thing as a counselor I didn't know the difference well he looked at me and was like uh, I'm pretty sure you know you need to see a counselor all I do is prescribe the medication I was so embarrassed because I'm thinking oh my gosh I just sat here and told him like all this story and I'm crying and he thinks I'm crazy and he's not even the person I'm supposed to be right. telling this to so it wasn't even for the ADD it was for depression and because I was tired and couldn't function and that's what I've always used it for and I justified it in my mind you know that it was okay is there is there anything else other than how you snuck half the capitals out and stuff like that is there any other thing that you can think of that you've done like recently you had another script right you said and so, i didn't know about it, it was something give me recently something sneaky in that january you um derek knew you know that i was back on it i got off of it you know went through the few days with them gave him my whole prescription you know really was trying however because I get um, I get a prescription for two months one for that month and one in advance that I can't get filled into a certain day for the month that it's due you know well I had completely forgotten about having it one day it just clicked in my head like oh yeah I have that prescription oh yeah I can go get it filled and he doesn't know about it so I did. I went and got it filled. I mean, was using ever since and trying to hide it from them. What happens is I'm prescribed 260 or 220 milligrams a day. Way too much. <laughs> and when I take a half, he can't, he didn't really notice so much. So I'd start taking a half. And then if I take a whole one, I noticed he didn't notice so, so much, but he would keep an eye out. Well, then I get greedy and I'm like, you know, I have two. I don't ever take more than prescribed. However, I get greedy. I want to take what's prescribed to me because it is, you know, that's how in my mind I, it thinks. So I start taking one and a half and then he definitely knows. And then I get caught and then I get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I started noticing your pupils were getting larger and larger and then you, you get pale. Okay, it starts to take away the color from your face, all your focus. You play your game on your phone. And it's all you focus. It makes you over focused. So right, it's something right. that's weird. But I do want everyone to know what we're planning on doing. This is just kind of sharing with someone who might be interested in going, well, what are you guys going to do about it? Right? Because action is really the only way to really fix right. this. Mm -hmm. You can't think your way into stop thinking about Adderall. It's always going to come back in your mind until you rewire your thinking. And the only way to do that is by action. I preach that. I know. Eric, you're preaching. Um, but it's true. It's what happened to me. It's the real truth, and that's how it worked. What we're going to do is we're going to taper you down, of course. I'm not going to go cold turkey, make her go through as, uh, the least amount of pain I'm going to try my best for her to do. Now, how is she going to do that? Hmm. We're going to make sure we have the time here soon. Some of those details we'll tell you after we do it because, right, you know, right, we have yeah. some stuff that's coming up. But nonetheless, um, we're going to taper her down right. to the to where when she jumps, she's not in as much pain. No matter what, she's probably going to have some symptoms. She's definitely going to experience with the opioids. She's going to be tired with the Adderall. I don't think we really need to even taper down on that. That's only while you're working. Right. When um, we get to the position to where I can do that, mm -hmm. which is coming up soon... Um, because we do have a plan in place then at that time I'll be able to quit doing it and have a better way to do it so that I can cope better with not having it and, um, I, and I support you like 100% yeah. I'm mm -hmm. gonna help you mm -hmm. and as long as you work with me and you're like you know what I got this and look it's not just me that she's gonna work with like we're gonna start going to meetings together we're gonna start getting actively involved together she's in my discord group now so make sure you guys go check it out it's in the description if you want to talk to people like us and just be able to share that we have meetings twice a day and stuff and I'm just plugging it but making the point that 
other women you are talking with already. Right. You know, you, you don't have to tell me everything. But right. I am here and I got you and I want to help you. And the reason why I care is because I know that there's freedom and happiness without needing the drug. And where she's at, she knows she can trust my words on that, but it doesn't seem like that's something that's true. And I know when I was using, I thought, there is no happiness apart from what I'm doing. What do you mean? It can't get better. It only gets worse. This is it. The best I can get is get high again or you keep using it. It just never ends. And then when I finally accepted and took that step, boom. One part of my mind feels like, you know, he doesn't understand. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do everything I do in my daily life without it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to be okay with gaining weight what am I gonna do with all these things you know so there that's one side of it and then second side of it is hearing Derek tell me you know all the things that I know are true because I remember being it, it's so crazy because I remember being on the other side of it you know telling him this and trying to convince him of these things and trying to get through to him so when he tells me that that's how I do you know relate because I've been where he is just like he's been where I have um, I've been where he is I know what he's going through with me doing what I'm doing because I was there I know that what he's saying is true I know that what he's doing is because he cares you know because they're all the things that I did too and vice versa so I think that he can relate to me and I can relate to him I'm just thankful that it wasn't the same you know we don't have the same choice of drugs She's that we an you know unfortunately it's different timing however it could be a good thing and it's just disguised you know because if we had been you know, both gone at the same time there would be probably no be no return and mm -hmm. if we had the same drug of choice there definitely be no return for us i'm not saying that's for everyone but it's so much harder when you are with someone who has the same drug of choice both addicts because they feed off of each and other we've seen that with Kurt. yeah and, and unfortunately Natalie. it's it's very hard and it's very hard for me even because i do get prescribed i do feel like in my mind i justify things that i shouldn't I get told by everyone I know that I'm not an addict, especially my own family, so then it convinces me that I'm not. But I start seeing uh, behaviors that I'm doing or things that I do that I normally wouldn't do or things that remind me of things that Derek used to do, and it scares the shit out of me. So that's what makes me realize, yes, I do have the problem, yes, um, I do need to be honest with myself because I am probably a good bullshitter and that's probably why people tell me that I'm so. not an addict um, <laughs> because they truly believe I'm not because they know who I am and they know how and keep everything together I'm very very functional almost scary functional because it can hurt me in the end you know more and I said in the last video that I was it felt good knowing you were me and the reason why is because well, hearing you say it, too, you know, because for the longest I was trying to tell you, like, look, this is what a drug addict would do. These are the things, these are the signs, and you were like, dude, unprescribed, like, back off. At the end of the day, I was, one of the things, like, they would ask if you go to a detox center, and I was like, well, I mean, I know that this doesn't 100% mean this, but, like, everyone in your family who's saying you're not a drug addict is one. But they, the reason, but they admit to it. They admit right. that they're drug addicts, but they tell me, and I, I know... I'm a drug addict. I know this person's a drug addict, but you are not. And the reason why is because I'm the normal one out of the family. Right. So they look up to me in a different way. Well, you're not you're not marrying multiple men. You're yeah, not they don't see this, right. that kind of behavior. You're not so going to methadone okay. for five years. Right. You're not uh, going to you know the hospital what? stuff like that seen in all your family and then with your dad right. and what you know she cried on that one extremist. video. Right. right. So you never like did certain things they've done. Therefore, you're not an addict. And that's the thing where I'm trying to say your behaviors might be different. Like, she didn't go kicking doors in and trying to steal everything from everybody. I don't go steal. I don't go... The only person I have to lie to is my husband, unfortunately. Um, I mean, but then again, I li I'm lying to myself at the same time. And deep down, I know that. Someone said it best in one of the comments that, I be you know, she believed that everyone was addicted to something. Yes, I believe that anyone be can become an addict, whether it be drugs or coffee. And I've said this before that comment i've told Derek this people can become addicted to anything so i'm not saying 
no, I'm not an addict. No, there's no chance I could ever be an addict. No, I know that I am an addict. However, there's such a thin line between dependency and addiction. When you are dependent on something, you are addicted to it. And Derek told me that not too long ago, even though we got in an argument because I tried to fight him on it, but it's true. You may not have that behavior of a, an addict feening and looking. However, we are addicted and we know that um, we can abuse it if we wanted to. Sometimes we have the urge to. Sometimes we can control it. Sometimes we can't, but we can't go without it. That's for sure, you know. I walked in the house that night and I had snuck this little, this, remember that night I went and did a urinalysis on Kurt? Of course, Kurt, you know, he was like, yeah, let's do it. We went to Walmart. This is the $35 um, test. And Kurt was like, yeah, sure. Here, you can have this. Cause he had this at his house. Yeah, thanks Kurt. Appreciate I it, bro. appreciate that. Thank you, because I needed this. And I knew that Ryan was showing the signs. I had been approaching you. What did I do? Thanks I looked... for coming through this one time, Kurt. What would happen? That you ever have. <laughs> what would happen that? when I walk up to you? You knew something was up when I'd stare at you with this look, huh? Yes, I hate that look. And I look at you and, and I go, and I look at your eyes and I you're know, like, and what I'm is like, wrong with what? you? And your pupils were obvious. And I'm like, dude. And I'm like, so... get out of my face. <laughs> So I walked in, and what happened? I, I had put this in the bathroom, then what did I do? You came in the bedroom and said, come on, you're taking a piss test. No, I walked you in the bathroom, I think then I got you with it. You're like, what? No, no, because I? I had a long walk to the bathroom thinking <laughs> about what the fuck am I gonna do. And then I said, all right, you're gonna pee, and here's what I did, I read, I read these, so I figured this is kind of funny. Um, I said uh, marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, amphetamine, ecstasy, opiate, opiates, phencyclidine, benzodiazepines. None of that, that didn't scare me methadone. when you started reading it because I already know. Derek knows if I if the only drug that I would do is the Adderall. I'm not worried about the other drugs because I know the only thing that's going to come up is the amphetamines, and I know that whatever drug test he has has that on there, or he wouldn't have it. Right. So I didn't care what else was on there because that was the only thing I knew. But you knew you were going to come positive for amphetamine. Right, and, and so, I didn't need to know what was on the drug so test because I, I already you, knew that whatever drug test you have has gotten that on there. I asked you, I, I said, you. Uh, take this or be honest. And <laughs> what did you say? I'm not taking it or something? What did you no, say? At first I was like, so you just walked out of the house and decided you're gonna go buy a drug test that we can't afford right now and he's like kurt got it and that never happens like when does kurt have a drug test on him, yeah, him on hand you know and i'm like yeah. really kurt had it you know yeah. like thinking what the heck i'm standing there thinking oh god what am i gonna do like and he flushes the toilet and i'm thinking Oh, well, why, well, hold, hold on let's pause for a second <laughs> why did i flush the toilet sweetheart i don't know why did you I don't know. Think about it. I think pretty... Because years ago... Uh-huh. When you drug tested me one time... <laughs> <laughs> I saw this trick that if I was taking it, you know, as a female, because we're sitting down, I could try to scoop it up. Well, I did that. Well, unfortunately, I scooped it up. He didn't even see it, and I really thought he saw it because I scooped it up and there was stuff on it, and I'm, like, trying to get it off of the the test and he still didn't see it and then I set it up there and thinking oh my god I can't believe he didn't see that yeah what happened with that it was cold yeah, what, was well cold first of all there's floating out? debris in the pee yeah, so it was like, like stuff okay. already in the toilet and I didn't know and it was so obvious it was so she bad. dunked the test in the toilet closed her legs she told me to get out of the bathroom which was a red flag because I've watched her give birth to three of my kids <laughs> like this is my wife this is my queen she's the queen of my heart like I've seen everything, you couldn't do anything that would, you know, she's no reason. But anyway, she closes her legs, dunks it in the toilet, comes up and hands it to me and I'm looking at it and it's, and I was so upset because I knew I didn't even care that there was pee water in there. I stuck my fingers down in it and was like, it's cold. What the heck? And I knew you lied. I'm like, what the heck? You know, you get angry, obviously. That's a natural response at first, but you calm down quickly and you try to resolve it, but you lied. You tried to sneak, you tried. And he was very mad because I wasted that test, so. Instead of just telling me, like she did this time, he, she just told me, you when know. When he asked me, you know, and I know, you know, it's gonna be positive, so when he asked me to, 
you know, take the pee test or be honest, I know I better not lie this time because last time I lied and that pissed him off more because I wasted a test. Right. So I was like, <laughs> oh God, I can't lie about it. And I'm already caught at this point, even though Derek, you know, if he was in my situation, he would be caught red handed and still lie about it. I, on the other hand, I'm not good at lying, so I'm definitely not good at lying if I'm caught red-handed. So I just went ahead and said, I'm not going to take the pee test. And he said, why? And I said, because it's going to be positive. And he said, positive for what? And I, you know, I think I started crying and then yeah. told him, you know, it's going to be positive for Adderall. So... And then that was the, that was the start of being angry, but also upset and hurt. And breaking my and trust and stuff. a little bit that I didn't waste the pee test. I'm that too, sure. that too. But I was glad that we opened up the door because the natural immediate response for any loved one is going to be a little upset. You're breaking their trust. That's normal and natural for loved ones and mothers and so forth that catch their kids or whatever. You're going to get upset. It's natural. But right. then what you do with it is what matters. And so we turned it into, okay, let's make this a healing moment. And we documented it. 